let's move on. You can you can <laughs> reduce something, I, of course. Um, <laughs> I was just, just hoping you wait, made a malaprop and it twi- and my ro- wires got crossed. Wait, Don't, real quick, Jay. Yeah. Yes. Tempting and attractive is seductive, just so you know. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Just adding more ductives. That's weird. Don't. How many don't, more ductives can we come up? I don't know. With? I'm just reductive, now. deductive, inductive. But the, I never want to hear you say seductive. Inductive and deductive are two again. different kinds of sure? kind of uh, yes, I'm reasoning. What's that? Pat's dressing up as an officer, officer saying seductive to me. I don't like it. It's just I don't weird. See, do you see him as an officer? Oh well, Is typically I know he's always in costume. Let me see. Pat, Let's are you in costume? He's scrambling to get his. Yeah, he's he. Not today. No, not today. He's off duty right now. It's yeah, funny. off duty. <laughs> off duty. He's in his narc outfit. I'm undercover. So, the Blazers <laughs> have shut down all trade requests for Damian Lillard. Right. This is why when Pat Riley comes out and says, "Hey, it's gonna be real tough to get someone here," that smells to me like Pat Riley made a phone call and maybe the call wasn't picked up, or he was told, "Nah, man, we're not trading him." So he's like, oh, "Well, that's the guy I wanted." That's what it felt like to me. Can we put? The Dame Lillard trade talk to bed. That's a different question. Adrian Wojnarowski, ESPN senior NBA insider, was on the Pat McAfee show. I think Miami, uh, they're going to be very anxious to watch what happens in Portland to see if there's any point this summer where Damian Lillard becomes available. He's not available now. He says he wants to be in Portland, and the Blazers have shut down anybody who's called about the possibility of trying to trade for him. Okay. Jay, can we put the trade talk to bed? Uh, what time does the draft start tonight? 8 o'clock. Because the, the trade talk will, as soon as they take Scoot Henderson, mm-hmm. you are going to hear a lot more talk. Mm-hmm. If, if I'm Dame and you take Scoot Henderson, you are telling me that you are building towards a rebuild. I do not want to be part of a rebuild. I've told y'all ass multiple times, publicly and privately, I do not want to be part of a rebuild. If you say y'all, it would be asses. Max, no one cares. Well, I'm, you pluralize. No one that. cares. You pluralize. So there's multiple. Fine. All right. Fine. All, all you asses, you, you scouts, GA, all you guys, yes. it does not matter. I'm telling you, I do not want to be a part of a rebuild. How many more times do I need to tell you? Do I need to slow down the way I tell you I do not want to be part of a rebuild at this stage of my career? One question for you, Damian Lillard. You want to be part of a rebuild. (laughs) I just, I don't, you're (laughs) unclear on this one point. Right, so, and they're going to take Scoot Henderson. And he's going to, by the way, if you're the GM of the Portland Trailblazers, Portland, do you really think you're going to be able to get someone in there to win a championship for Damian Lillard, who's 33 and makes all the money in the world? And by the way, now you're on the clock as a GM, get it done or else. Or would you rather with a very high draft pick and potentially a franchise player, depending on how his shot develops, right? Would you like to have a three, four year runway to see what you can do to build a team? This is what I'm asking. Jody Allen, if you can hear me, this is what you need to do. The blueprint has already been done. Just look down in Atlanta. Look at the Falcons. Look at Arthur Blank. He did right by Matt Ryan. Mm -hmm. He did right. They were trending in a different direction. He wanted Matt Ryan to have his best possible chance to win a chip. He sends him to Indianapolis. It didn't work out for Matt Ryan, but damn, he gave him a shot. He did the right thing. Now, (laughs) That's what you can do for Dame. Now, I'm not saying that you need to be held hostage the way that I felt like the Washington Wizards were by Bradley Bill saying, this is the only team because you didn't give a guy like Dame a no-trade clause. That, that's another conversation. We'll get back to Washington in a second. But if he gives you a list of teams, if that's Miami, Brooklyn, Philadelphia, work with those teams, try to extract as much value as possible do right by a guy that's been loyal to you for so long. There's a in big his difference between him and Matt. Do right. Ryan. <clears throat> the big difference between him and Matt Ryan, or taking it for example, uh, Steve Nash. Obviously, there's subtle differences, but I'm just saying. No, but the, the, the same theme. I don't think it's, it's. I think these are they're important differences, and b- based on what you just said, and the same thing goes for Steve Nash because that was a similar situation. Nash is coming off a very good season, and but was in slight decline already. And the, when the Lakers pulled that off that trade because the Chris Paul trade was undone, the difference is Dame is still at the height of his powers. He's still a great MVP-ish level player, right? 
And when you say extract as much value as you can, that weakens if you're looking for players back and not just draft compensation, any team to which he's dealt. So Damian Lillard going to ownership and saying, hey, do the right thing. The reason I say he's almost better off striking the deal himself with management and then presenting it to whatever team he has a high basketball IQ he's surveying the landscape thinking I can win there with these guys but wait a minute if you start taking guys off that roster maybe I can't win there Matt Ryan was traded for a third round pick because he was past it right to do right by Damian Lillard is to get less value than he's worth or else wherever he's going unless it's pure draft compensation Wherever he's going is going to be weakened, and that's not really doing right by him. See the difference? I, yeah, I wasn't saying it's apple to apples, right? Like I was, I wasn't saying. I was just saying that the, the overall theme, Max, though, about if you are turning towards a rebuild, mm-hmm. I do not want to be part of a rebuild. No, right? We both agree. Like they'll draft Henderson, he's out the door, right? What do you get for him, and how does that go I think down? You can get a lot for for Damian Lillard. I agree. I think you can get a lot. Where does he go? Where does he end up? I don't know. I mean, I, he gave his list of teams like Miami, obviously the Brooklyn Nets. They have a lot of collateral, right? They have draft picks. They got a lot in return from Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and J- the James Harden move. Like, I think those are both feasible options that teams that are willing to give you a lot in return for Damian Lillard. The Nets would be a very, very good team with Damian Lillard. Him and Mikel Bridges in the backcourt? Yeah. Yeah. Still feels like they might be. But like, and, and look. Last thing I'll say in it, we, we well, actually, the people that are talking about trying to send Zion Williamson to Portland, thinking that that's going to keep Dame in Portland, oh, I got something to say to you about that. <laughs> so, thinking that Zion Williamson going to Portland, if I were Dame, would be even more insulting than taking Scoot Henderson with the third pick in the draft. More insulting to me. Because now what you're saying is a guy who's played 114 games in four years, in four years, who I get has all the talent in the world, but you're going to tell me that that's what you're bringing to me to try to help me win a championship, a guy that I can't even count on to be available when I need my players to be available to help me win a championship. You're going to say, hey, here's the thought of what something could be, but I'm like, I'm not worried about the thought of what something could be. I need something that is. So for me, that's even more of a slap in the face on Dame Lillard. And I'm looking at management being saying pretty much, you guys are insufferable to me. Like, I, I, I can't. Who I is can't available? In- Who's available? Just tell me a better player available. I'm Portland management. Okay, Dame, who do you think we would Max. Porzingis have been a better idea? Because he was available. Should we have gone after Chris Stapps, Porzingis? Would you like that more? You know, like to me, Zion Williamson, look, there's a chance he doesn't stay healthy. I think injury is a huge thing in sports nowadays that is throwing everything into chaos, right? Like it's hard to make predictions because it seems like everyone's always hurt. And it could, ha- you know, name a team that you're not worried about injury on right now. I guess the Celtics, but even there, poor Zingas. You're right? always worried about injury. Right. But, but, but usually sometimes you could say, well, given this guy's age, given this guy's injury history, I'm especially worried about this team. I'm just saying that applies to so many teams now, right? So take a guy like Zion Williamson, who's averaged more games in the first four years of his career than Joel Embiid did, right? Embiid missed, what was it, two full seasons to start his career. You got to average all that in. If, but Embiid turned it around and he got healthy. If Zion could get healthy, unless you think he just won't ever, and maybe he doesn't, but Zion and Dame, what that would look like, that is a lot. You're, so great explanation right there. Yeah. But you're telling me if you're a Dame, that would be enough to keep you in Portland? Well, I think if if not, then what I would say <laughs> is there's nothing that will keep well, Dame I'm asking you, if you are Dame and understanding what you and I have talked about for a while now about Zion Williamson, and we always say the best availability, the best ability is availability, correct? Yeah. So now you are Dame. Mm-hmm. You're telling me that's enough to keep you in Portland, Max? I would say this. That depends. I don't know Dame's mind. If I'm Dame and my mind is I really want to win in Portland and I'm surveying the landscape and I see, okay, wait a minute, that's a move on a distressed asset that we can bring in now and then still go out and get something we can continue to build. But can that be a pillar? Yes, it can. Now, if I'm Dame and I'm just paying lip service to the idea at this point that I want to stay, but I really want to leave, then the answer is no. Depends what's in his mind. I I mean, I, I 
couldn't disagree with you more, man. I, I'm not looking at Zion as a linchpin for my organization. I think he he has no, it's to not be a linchpin. It's a it's a it's a home run swing. You might swing and miss, but you might hit a home run. Well, I, I'm, I, at this stage of my career, though, like I'm I'm not trying to base the next five years on a home run swing. I hear you. If I, I'm I, if like, I'm I, I want to go to Miami. Like I, I'd I'm like to go to Miami. Like you know, so like just that's what I'm saying. It comes back to like you're rebuilding with Scoot Henderson and Anthony Simon, right? You're rebuilding. Or if you're telling me that you're going to trade the pick to get a guy like Zion, like what other additional pieces are? I'm watching this arms race occur. I'm watching the Lakers with LeBron and AD. Well, I mean, are they going to land a Fred Van Vliet? Wait, I'm watching Phoenix with Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant, and Devin Booker. I don't know what moves Dallas is going to make, but I know Dallas now got Luka and Kyrie Irving. They're looking to add some additional pieces. I'm watching Sacramento light the beam. They are on their way to be one of the powerhouses. I'm still watching Golden State. If they keep Draymond Green, if they sign him with Steph Curry and Wiggins, Wiggins is going to be healthy for a full year. I got Jordan Poole. You think Jordan Poole and Draymond, they're going to figure it out. With Klay mm-hmm. Thompson, like we are far behind here. But if you get Zion in the fold and maybe add one more piece, you may have three players that match up with any three players. You know, Zion has yet to take the next step because of the injury. But the, the platform, the, the plateau from which he will take that step is extremely high already per game. So if he can stay healthy and improve, and by the way, there is reason to think he might stay healthy, and there's good reason to think if he does, he'll improve. Now you have an MVP player you're playing with who's ascending, and now you get in that kiss in that other piece somehow. You're as good as anyone. I feel you, but I don't, I don't know which way you're arguing, though. You're, you're, you're talking to me about reason on one end, but then on the other end, on the other side of your mouth, Max, you're telling me that if you were Dame, that's not going to keep you there. No, it's the same, same so side wait, of my let, mouth. Let, so what I'm saying is— Let me ask you, if yeah. you are Dame— I'm not asking you to provide me with reason on why you if think Dame. I was Dame. If you well, were I Dame, go to that's Miami. what I want to know. I want to go to Miami. Thank you. Yeah, but by the way, Miami, not Let Brooklyn, you, not Philly, Miami. So you don't even, you don't think Brooklyn with their assets have a better chance of surrounding you with pieces? You or Mikael Bridges? Yeah, but who is available? I'll who tell is you one why. of the best? If I shoot my shot, if I give up that thing which is loyal to the soil, right? Like if I'm going to give, not, if I'm going to give that up you're not giving at, at up. this point in my career, then I want to make sure I give myself the best chance to win a championship not simply improve my odds by some percentage but think yes that's where I belong that's the type of thing I want to be involved in right to me that's Miami if I want to if I'm Dame and I'm gonna I'm gonna use up all that equity I'm gonna spend it all now that I have my loyalty to Portland it's gonna be for the Miami Heat still need to see what moves Philadelphia is making what moves if any Milwaukee is making instead of just signing back their core and also what's going on down with the Miami Heat, if they're able to pull this off with Dame Lillard, if they're if they are able to pull it off with Dame, I still would probably have Boston as a slight favorite, but Miami will be right there. So, uh, it, look, it definitely sets them apart. I think it's a it's a player who unlocks both Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown because they could be used complementary towards each other in that trio. Why? Because if you thought a pick and roll with Al Horford was lethal. <laughs> what the hell do you think a pick and roll with Chris Stapp's Porzingis will be? So Who can shoot it from the outside, can roll to the rim, but, shooter. Oh. But, but the main thing is seven foot three. Yes, and by the way, it's Joe Mazzulla now will have to find out what's the right construction time-wise and personnel-wise to activate that properly in the right scheme, right? So there's a lot of pressure now on Joe Mazzulla, mm-hmm. but I mean, if you're if you're running a pick and roll towards a strong side in which you have Jason Tatum on, right? You have Jalen Brown dancing with the ball at the top with Chris Stops, with him rolling or picking and popping, reading the offense. Just you can't an issue help of execution. Tatum. There's nothing you can oh, do. Oh, come on. And you can have Derek White yeah. as a shooter. You have Malcolm Brogdon as a shooter in the corner. You still have Robert Williams if he can maintain healthy with the defensive principles he brings to the table for this team. Robert Time Lord is a real good defender. Real. When they had uh, Tice back then, I thought, you know, before – they they started Time Lord. I thought Tice is good. He can do this and that. But when 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 Robert Williams took over, it's like, oh my God, wait a minute, this is different. You just need him to be available. Yeah, right. You need him to be available. Um, he needs to be health lord, Jay. What about Marcus Mark to the Grizzlies? I love it. I mean, look. Uh, so obviously, when you think about the Eastern Conference, like I may mention before, you still got the Celtics, Seventy Sixers. Um, we'll see if the Knicks can make any moves. Cavs are still there as well. 
Um, we'll talk about the Bulls later in the show and what they do with Zach Levine. But as it relates to the Western Conference, a conference that so many people talked about being up in the air, even though I said that Denver was the team to beat the whole season, I love what this brings to the locker room. So obviously you have the 25-game suspension max for John Morant. But the one thing that you always felt like that hindered Memphis from getting there was the lack of maturity in the locker room, right? And you had guys like Dylan Brooks, and you heard Jaron Jackson talk about it on Paul George's podcast, right? Where it was like, yeah, do you think we gave LeBron James extra incentive to beat us? Like you're poking the bear, like Dylan Brooks said. Yeah, there's a time and there's a place for that. Now I think you have a leader in the locker room that says, yo, in order, we can't just talk about being that team. This is how we're going to be that team. And now you have two players on their team, one big and one guard, who are both defensive player of the years in this league. Yeah, that's crazy. Front that's court. That's huge and, and for You them. got two defensive players of the years, one in the front court, one in the back court. And I'm still going to say – both in or around their primes, Jackson's getting there, Smart's in his. There's still one piece that they're missing. I still think they need to go out and get a guy like OG Ananobi. If they're able to get a guy like OG from Toronto, I think he is that 3 and D type player. I think he can shoot the ball from the outside. Mm -hmm. I think he can slash and get to the rim. Mm -hmm. And he fits in culture-wise for Zach Kleiman and his team. But I think getting Marcus Smart is the right leader and it's the right player, veteran player to say, yo, Ja, come here. This is how we're going to roll. Mm -hmm. This is how we're going to communicate. And this is how we're going to build the right principles for this foundation, for this team to win a chip. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.